Maybe you're not gonna like my answer, but I don't think you're gonna be a sprinter. Jack Francis, 15 years old, 50 kilos, 174 centimeters. How can I improve my sprinting as I am more of a climber? <sighs> Maybe you're not gonna like my answer, but I don't think you're gonna be a sprinter. You're too light. Uh, I haven't seen you, so I can't really judge for real, but sprinting is something that you need the body type for and you need to be very strong. So I would suggest go to the gym and see how that works. If your reaction on the gym is very good, maybe you can still be a sprinter, but not everybody can be a very strong sprinter. Stay with climbing, mate. Climbing is very important in cycling. So if you're a good climber, be happy. Jack Dolan. How do you get in the races that you do? And are you a pro because you make money? Hey. Uh, I get into the races that I do because I can just subscribe in the race. It's very easy. Everybody can join the races that I join in. Um, am I a pro because I make money? I don't make a lot of money with cycling. Sometimes there's a little prize money, but it's I cannot make a living out of the stuff that I I make from cycling so no i'm not a pro i want to be a pro but i'm not a pro fear 97 a correct gearing and a heavy bike versus a light bike and incorrect gearing which one do you choose all right let's say you have a heavy bike with very light gearing and there's a mountain you will get up there all right because your gearing is light enough let's say you have a very light bike with the incorrect gearing you're not gonna make it because the gearing is not good and it's too heavy. So give me a heavy bike with the correct gearing because I can sprint a heavy bike, I can downhill a heavy bike and I can get up the climb with a heavy bike when the gearing is right. So an interesting question from Cycling TV. Hey Jasper, I'm 16 years old, I'm a Dutch cyclist and I want to start racing next year. I have a power meter and my one hour FTP is 274. I think I can get a higher FTP as I'm improving quite a lot and I'm not on my max yet. Do you have an idea what I should be looking for when I'm starting to race? Any advice on the equipment and the type of kit? All right, dude, you're starting to race. You're 16 years old, FTP 247. Of course, it's not on your max. Of course, you're gonna improve a lot. You're only 16 years old. So there's so many years of road cycling ahead of you and you just started. So that FTP is gonna go up every every year. Every time you do a test, it's gonna be going up if you do the right training. Don't worry about your bike. Don't worry about your kit. It doesn't matter. Just get a normal bike, make sure it's well maintained and that it's ready for a race. You don't need Dura-Ace, you don't need any fancy wheels. You just need to ride your bike. Go to a club, join the club and start riding your bike start racing and you'll see what happens that's my advice just go and do it Mateus W have you considered competing in cross-country eliminator I don't know what it is uh, is that some kind of race in the US I'm not sure you could do you could do very well with your BMX background and your power bank I've never done any cyclocross so Boris Festa Hey Jasper, have you ever considered doing a top du tour in France? Uh, great videos, by the way, bro. Thanks, Boris. Um, have I considered it? Not yet. Mm, I don't know. Next year I'm going to focus on races. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do something like that again. Ryan van Arkel. What type of food do you eat when you are working versus racing? Uh, I eat the same stuff. I don't care. Well, I eat plain food on the plane, which is not good. Plain food is not really the best food you can eat. It's just a big hassle to take food every time. And on the way back from a trip, I can't take food anyway. So because it's a couple of days later, so I just eat the plain food, but pretty much the same stuff when I race or when I train, because I think when you race or when you train, you should eat good. And when you race, you should eat good. So it's the same stuff, right? When I race, I use a little bit more sports food, like sports bars and that sort of stuff. When I train, I use a little bit more like normal bread buns or 
regular type cookie bars and then when I race I use like the real energy bars from whatever brand Benji261 how do you get rid of the bad smell in your helmet just wash it under the sink or in the shower and then I don't know you should get rid of the bad smell if you do that a couple times don't wait a couple months just do it every couple weeks whatever then I think it's our it stays out Matej Burian are you planning to get a TT bike uh, not at the moment because they're so freaking expensive uh, if I can get a TT bike in another way I would love to get a TT bike because then I can I can win on TT races right now I don't have a TT bike so it's really hard to win Christopher Jenkins what camera do you use and what type of editing software it's a uh, GoPros and Adobe Alec Diebel how big of a difference could racing wheels make over training wheels in a road race the difference is pretty big wheels are probably one of the best upgrades you can do for your bike aerodynamically it saves a lot when you have deep section wheels stiffness lateral stiffness everything changes dramatically so good wheels make a big difference gal anonym what do you think about the global cycling network about their training advices if you've seen that well GCN is a great network uh, they have an awesome channel they're very big I can never compete with GCN because they're they probably have a whole production team and they produce so many videos and about so much stuff they're in different places every time which makes it awesome to watch in general their training advices are pretty good I think but they're very uh, non-specific most of the time they give advice that everybody can use but it's important when you make a training plan that you mix and match those trainings those different training types into a correct plan and that's very individual for everybody so one on one side they're very good on the other side it's not very personal so for the general public pretty good uh, if you go further into racing uh, and you look at their videos you'll see that it's it doesn't really apply sometimes I give weird advices I don't want to bring them down they're a very cool channel but I can't agree when they say WD-40 is a lubricant and that sort of stuff so they go pretty far on branding but Guy Frissen hey Jasper what do you think of the competitors with Team Utrecht on the bibs I see them a lot in your racing videos in the Netherlands well guy I looked you up on uh, Google and it seems like you are one of those guys so you're asking me what I think of you those Team Utrecht guys are my competitors so I respect them that's all I can say but on two occasions now they were in the front and they didn't want to take a pool so hmm Edna 243 what pl training plan would you recommend for this climb uh, and there's a Strava segment going to a very long climb it's about two hours two hours is too long to go at your FTP so you have to go on a lower intensity so you need to train for longer times and you should do intervals at sub maximum so a little bit below your FTP and try to get these intervals longer and longer so you're able to handle that intensity for a longer time also do FTP intervals because you need to mix and match purple ice Jasper you told me that I should train more and eat more but my bikes are just a Walmart mountain bike and a single speed with a coaster brake any suggestions what I should do by the way I'm the kid who is 170 tall and 40 kilos in case you don't remember of course I remember you dude um, well you know your equipment is not that important you need to learn how to ride your bike and you can train on any equipment it really doesn't matter when you have the talent you'll get up there so just keep training dude keep training and when you get the chance save the money and get a little bit better bike and then try to get into a race maybe a Walmart MTB bike is not good enough to really go racing maybe you can borrow a bike from somebody like a proper racing bike 
and you can see how you do and if you do very well maybe somebody can help you with a good bike for a race maybe you need certain standard of equipment but don't look around too much at all the other people at the race because I see guys in races riding a $8,000 bike but they don't know how to go through a corner so you need to get technical first then get ex expensive bikes equipment is not important you are uh, Hans Steiners wants to know how the racing season in San Francisco is in September October and November I don't know try to look it up go to uh, National Bicycle Association USA cycling website and you'll see when and where there's races but I think there will only be some cyclocross races maybe mountain bike in that period Sylvia Ferrari which GoPro mount are you using at the moment I'm using this uh, KH mount because it's more solid than the shitty GoPro stuff I can't show you right now because I don't have my bike but you probably know what I'm talking about Dan Sheep 13 wants to know why I'm not doing cyclocross in the winter because it seems the same as Criterion racing and it's better than doing all those base miles in the winter well Dan Sheep I don't know where you're from in the Netherlands the winter is pretty wet and pretty cold and cyclocross racing in the Netherlands is all about the blubber and the mud and shit in your eyes and shh. I don't like blubber so and I don't have a cyclocross bike so I I don't have the bike don't like the blubber uh, Jetro Nagel in a race what parameters do you display on your Garmin is it different from when you're training some riders will block out heart rate uh, for example as it might put them off mentally seeing high numbers I don't block out my heart rate I want to know my heart rate just because I like to know the numbers in general I have time distance cadence power instant power and then something like 10 or 3 second power heart rate that's it but it's different when I'm training because when I'm training sometimes I have 30 second power average power lap power lap time lap distance depends on which training I'm doing or I have the map display in front because I'm navigating or I just have heart rate and time when I'm doing an easy ride or I'll have the display where I see all the averages of my last lap depending what I'm doing in training so yes it changes up a lot alright guys that's it for this Q&A if your question is not answered maybe it wasn't in the right place so get your questions in the comments of this video and next month in the next video always put it in the last video so I know where to look for your question because I get a lot of comments and I can't look through them all every time when I do the Q&A video so it's hard to see when your question is not at the right place get your question in these comments and I'll see you in the next Q&A see ya Mama, 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 mama.